Lesson 3 for July 13 through to 19, Sabbath, a day of freedom, read by Dr. Percy Harold. Sunday, July 14, Manner Enough. After generations of slavery and the social degradation that such a condition could inflict on his oppressed people, God sought to lift up the newly freed Israelites, pointing them to a better way of living and giving them laws for the best ordering of their new society. But one of the first parts of this process came in the form of a practical and instructive object lesson. Continuing for the full forty years of their wilderness wanderings, this rhythm of life, visible evidence of God's provision and practised unselfishness, should have become part of the culture of Israelite society. It came in the form of manna, a food that appeared each morning on the ground around the Israelites' camp. Question. Read Exodus chapter 16, verses 16 through to 18. What do you think is the significance of the specific measure for each person emphasized in these verses? Exodus 16, beginning at verse 16, this is the thing which the Lord has commanded. Let every man gather in according to each one's need, one omer for each person according to the number of persons. Let every man take for those who are in his tent. Then the children of Israel did so, and gathered, some more, some less. So, when they measured it by omers, he who gathered much had nothing left over, and he who gathered little had no lack. Every man had gathered according to each one's need. In Second Corinthians chapter 8, verses 10 to 15, Paul references this story as an example of how Christians should give. The whole section reads, beginning at verse 10 of 2 Corinthians chapter 8, And in this I give advice. It is to your advantage not only to be doing what you began and were desiring to do a year ago, but now you also must complete the doing of it, that as there was a readiness to desire it, so there also may be a completion out of what you have." For, if there is first a willing mind, it is accepted according to what one has, and not according to what one does not have. For I do not mean that others should be eased and you burdened, but by an equality, that now at this time your abundance may supply their lack, that their abundance also may supply your lack, that there may be equality. As it is written, He who gathered much had nothing left over, and he who gathered little had no lack. And as it says in uh, the New International Version for verse 14, At the present time your plenty will supply what they need, so that in turn their plenty will supply what you need. The goal is equality. The lesson for the Israelites and us was that God has provided sufficiently for his people and his creation. If we take only what we need and are prepared to share our excess with others, all will be cared for and provided for. Taking only enough for the day required the people to trust that there would be more the following day. Oppressed people, such as the Israelite slaves, tend to focus on their own survival, but God wanted to demonstrate to them a life of trust, generosity, and sharing. But there was also another, more remarkable dimension to this practice. Each Friday, a double portion of manna appeared on the ground, and on that day, and only that day, the people were to collect the extra manna in preparation for the Sabbath. The special provision for the Sabbath became an additional way for them to learn to trust the Lord for all their needs. This extra portion of manna, an act of grace on God's part, enabled them to enjoy even more fully the rest that God had promised them on the seventh day Sabbath. So to finish the day, what can we do on Fridays that will help us better enjoy what God offers us on Sabbath? You have been listening to a reading of the Adult Sabbath School Bible Study Guide by Dr. Percy Harold from Queensland, Australia. This service is brought to you by Hope Channel, the Sabbath School Department and Christian Services for the Blind. Remember, God is always faithful.